What's up, everyone? Welcome to the show. You guys know what it is. If you are a fan of our channel, this is Tune In Live. I'm your host, Mike C. None of my co hosts are available today. A lot of them are working, doing other stuff. So it's just me. <clears throat> we haven't done any podcasts here lately. And this is one of our good shows to come to, just to chill out, hang with the crew. Talk about some topics, etc. But it's been quite a while. It's been a while since the last episode that we had on here. And I believe that's when I, we were talking with Dark, Shadow, and Johnny T. I know we got too carried away with Star Wars at one point. Uh, Dark wanted to cover a lot of Star Wars related stuff. So we did get to that. And then after that, it was just very, very few streams, so forth, you know. It was, I want to say that there was one Earthfall stream that we did, which was very awesome. By the way, um, my co-host Shadow just informed me via Facebook that the first DLC patch is out today. So it comes with the third campaign for the game, Earthfall. If you guys have yet to play Earthfall... If you're on Xbox, download it. It's an awesome game. 30 bucks. If you missed that old style of Left 4 Dead with the uh, campaign co-op, etc. You're not dealing with zombies, you're dealing with aliens. Try it out. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on Steam. It could be. I haven't checked for it on PC at all. And I don't think it is on PS4. But right now it is on Xbox. It's a good game. Definitely try it out. Plus, of course, coming back to the show, always come back with allergies. I was sick the last couple of days, allergens in the air, you know, weather's changing. Like, last week it was pretty pretty decent weather, and then today it's like hotter than hell, and next week's going to probably be a little bit different. Summer's almost coming to a close. This is actually, in certain areas, like my area, this is one of the last, this is the last week for kids with summer vacation. Some of your kids out there are probably already back to school, you know, ter terrorizing the teachers and shit. I know how that always is. But for me, you know, my daughter, her, this is her last week of summer vacation. My last week of eternal rest before next week when she goes back to school. Of course, I have to get up, take her to school, get her from school, homework, all that kind of stuff, you know. So my daughter's going to be pretty busy. More likely, I'm going to be pretty busy, too, because my daughter, she's now in cheerleading and stuff like that. So, she's going to be pretty, pretty damn busy all the way up till December, and I'm going to be busy. So, there probably won't be as many streams as I would like there to be, because usually we're streaming like four or five, sometimes six days during a week. But I did take a a big turn with that. You know, I would stream like maybe two or three days a week. And then, of course, you know, like, I guess a lot of people, a lot of our fans, you know, a lot of our people have fallen off the face of the earth. You know, they're not really here with us, but you know, we, we do have our haters, you know, our haters, they love to come and harass us. You know, they, they come over, they watch. So, hey, enjoy watching. You know, you're not, you're not going to get your toxicity out there, etc. Anyway, <clears throat> before we get on to this, I do want to make an announcement. Uh, we are on the following, as you can see on the screen, uh, Twitter. If you're on Twitter, be sure to follow us over there at AeroOfficial17 for any updates and miscellaneous posts from us. So if you want to catch up with when we go live or whatever it is, tune in live, any of our gameplay streams, follow us on there for any updates. Same thing with Facebook. If you're on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash arrow with a name. Check out our page on there as well. Patreon, yes, we are on Patreon. If you want to become a patron and support the channel, go to patreon.com slash air with a name. And, of course, we are also on YouTube. So, more likely, you are viewing this after it has been live and pre-recorded on YouTube, which our channel is Arrow Entertainment. You can find all our pre-recorded um, live streams and such on our channel. So, you want to check that out. Plus, we got compilations, game compilations and stuff. Coming out on there too as well. Speaking of which, I got I got a bone to pick with YouTube. Okay, I'm not making any kind of financial benefit beneficiary well financial benefits I guess from these social media platforms like Twitch, 
and YouTube. Even though I am an affiliate, oh, excuse me, our channel is an affiliate with Twitch right now. So anybody who subscribes, who tips us with bits, thank you very much. Um, but we don't make enough one here to actually get it accumulated to even remotely get a paycheck from Twitch. Whereas with YouTube, it's it's a little bit more challenging because those at YouTube and Google, they want to make it to where if your content is worthy of being the next big thing, then it's got to be a lot of clean content. It's got to be what YouTube wants you to make it. You got to have a minimum of a thousand subscribers, four thousand hours combined watch time within a month, year, whatever it is. It's a pain in the ass. And where YouTube differs from Twitch, YouTube works off of views. And those views and the view time is, is what gets you paid, basically. It gets, it gets you the money, if you want to look at it that way. Whereas with Twitch, the subscriber base, the bits, the donations, that's where you make money off of it. Me, I do this stuff for fun. I, I like to entertain. It's something I do all my spare time. It's a good hobby of mine. I, I enjoy doing it. I'm a lot more open now to it than I ever was. But I got a bone to pick with YouTube. Okay. I'm not making any money on YouTube. YouTube channel is a place where I like to upload my pre-recorded content. Even stuff I put together. Little stuff. Like, I enjoy putting together compilations now my group and I we play PUBG on the Xbox a lot we we play a lot of PUBG fun game you know there's quite a few channels out there that you know stream and, and, and play PUBG you know like it's the you know the greatest thing out there which I, I, I would agree it's bigger it, it should be bigger than fucking Fortnite Fortnite's a fucking jabroni piece of garbage but but I got like compilations that I put up on YouTube. And within those compilations, I make them a little bit more interesting. I put a little twist on it. You know, I'll add music. I'll add music to the compilations. Um, fitting the mood, make it a little bit more hilarious, make it a little bit more interesting to watch. So recently, I put up a compilation on YouTube. And of course, they flagged it for a couple songs. Banned in. This country, that country, blah, blah, blah. And of course, one of the songs is I Ran by Flock of Seagulls. Now, tell me this. How is it you can find that song on YouTube? The music video and everything. It'll play perfect. But as soon as you put it in a video that you're not monetizing, you're not going to make any money off of, YouTube decides this video is blocked because this song is in your video. How much sense does that make? How does that make any sense? I'm a small content creator, okay? I, I do create content. I've done it. I've been doing it for the last three years. So coming across this, I understand if somebody had a copyright infringement, um, uh, what you call it? I can't even think of the words. I can't even think straight now. But let, let, let's just say... Somebody was, was, you know, copyright striking me for copyright, not copyright infringement or whatever because I put the song in my video. Okay. I appealed it because I'm like, you know what? I'm not making any money off of this. I'm not doing this to be an asshole. I'm putting it up here as entertainment, you know, and plus the music in the video is protected under fair use. Okay, so I'm not making any money off of the artists. I'm not making any money off of the song. I put the song in there. You know, just for entertainment gain. You know, to make it entertaining. I'm not on YouTube to make a buck. So, YouTube decides, okay, well, we're going to copyright strike this. So I appealed it. Well, of course I didn't win the appeal because whoever the song is through, you know, they're like, oh, well, it still stands. Take the video down or take out or delete the song. I'm like, I'm not deleting anything off the fucking video. So it's still on YouTube where I can see it, but nobody else can view it because it's blocked, quote unquote, blocked in other countries. 
to where they can't view it. So okay. So to a lot of my friends on YouTube, not not YouTube, to a lot of my, you know, they, 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 some of they are um, on YouTube. Blah. <laughs> Jumble my roads around. But to those who are on Facebook, I uploaded it to Facebook. And of course, Facebook would want to do the same thing. I'm like, uh uh, restore audio. So I did that. Everything was perfect. I'm like, what are y'all trying to gain? You know, people are able to put this stuff on several different platforms and nothing happens to them. Somebody like me does it. And I'm not doing it to make any money off of it. I'm not doing it to claim it. I don't own the music. I don't own the rights to the music, but you want to copyright claim my account for it. YouTube is going down the shitter gradually. And it has been for the last two years. And all that all that's left on there is any content that people still watch till today. And then, of course, you got your trolls out there that are quote unquote taking it over. He ain't taking over shit. I mean, who wants to sit around on YouTube watching a bunch of idiots argue with each other, doxing each other, attacking each other, harassing each other? It's not even trolling anymore. It's like a big war zone on there of keyboard warriors who thinks. They're big and bad, and then they're like, oh, I'm going to send a pizza to your house, or I'm going to come out to your house, I'm going to do this, do that, I'm going to have you fire from your, you know, all that stuff. YouTube has gotten bad. I go on there, and I'll still watch content videos, you know, actual good content videos, a lot better than what theirs are. It's just hilarious how YouTube has gotten. Even some of those same trolls that I know, um... They've carried over to Twitch. Now they're going to try to take, you know, take take their activities over here and attack people on Twitch now, which they're not going to get far because Twitch has more stricter guidelines, more stricter terms of service than these idiots even really think they do. You know, one of them is like, oh, they're not going to touch me. <laughs> yeah, you want to bet? You know, the first time you talk shit on someone and you really attack them, oh, you're gone. It ain't like YouTube. YouTube is completely broken. YouTube's been broken for the last two years. I use it as like a... I guess I want to say like a storage. It's like a, like a flash drive sort of, you know, put my videos on there. And, and, and they're still watchable to the public, you know? So, if anybody wants to view good quality content that's crystal clear and all, I upload it to YouTube. Because whenever I upload it to Facebook, sadly, Facebook's quality when it comes to videos is not that great. I've streamed to Facebook several times. I, I do enjoy streaming to Facebook. You know, I do get a, a, a better audience on Facebook when it comes from my friends and some of my family. They'll tune in and see what I'm doing and, and such. But the quality on there is not... It, it's not even 40% great. It's like blurry... It's pixelated. It's garbage. Trust, trust me. It is complete garbage. Just like right now, like with using OBS um, Streamlabs, I'm constantly having drop frames. I don't know why, but it's it still comes out pretty good. And it's probably my PC the way it's running. I don't know. But anyways, on with the show. I do got one important thing to talk about. And I know this wasn't really going to be like a news-related show. I turned it away to make an actual podcast out of it. But there are some articles I do like to talk about within the show. And one of them being, it, it came up recently. <clears throat> now, I like Sony. I like Microsoft. Nintendo, I like Nintendo up until the Wii. Maybe a little bit of the Wii U, but with, with when it comes to Nintendo's marketing strategies and everything that they do to protect their rights, their copyright, to protect everything about them is completely bullshit. Like, okay, recently, one of the biggest ROM and emulator websites that's been around for over 15 years has taken down all their content because of Nintendo. Nintendo went 
and filed lawsuits against several websites that were distributing Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, any Game Boy related games, GameCube, anything like that, ROMs and emulators, distributed them on their websites for free. And Nintendo's being a bunch of assholes about it. Just like a while back, there was a website that had every single issue of Nintendo Power uploaded that you can view online. And everybody loved that. You know, relive the good old memories of Nintendo Power. What happened? Nintendo got them. They filed a copyright claim against them. They said, you can't do this without our permission. So, what did they do? They took it down. Anybody who made a clone, like, okay, there was a 3D version of the original Legend of Zelda made for a browser. And it was in beta form. I got to play a little bit of it. And five days later, Nintendo struck it. Without their permission, you know, oh, yeah, without our permission, you don't have permission to upload or do anything with our, our software, da-da-da, you know. Nope, take it down. It was complete bullshit. It truly was. So, that hurt a lot of people. I'm surprised they didn't get the guys who made GoldenEye Source, okay? GoldenEye Source is something that somebody had created using the Half-Life engine. I think it was a Half-Life engine or, or Counter-Strike engine on Steam. It's still standing to this day. It's one of the best things anybody could download right now for free. I'm surprised Nintendo didn't come at them with that. And I think why that is, is because the, the uh, third company developer, Rareware, yeah, Rareware, is now purchased and owned by Microsoft. Even though there is some copyright um, policies and difficulties with the Golden the, the Golden Eye title, that you know, to where Rareware is unable to put it out there on Xbox or any other source, so it's it's hard to get the um, copyrights and license to Golden Eye because it's it's still somewhat under Nintendo, but. With, when it comes to Rare, that, that, that's a hard situation right there. It's like Nintendo can't do anything with their number one first-person shooter on their console. They can't do anything at all because the third-party company is now purchased and owned by Microsoft, so they can't touch it. And plus being GoldenEye Source is on Steam, and Steam is a Microsoft Windows-related app and servers, so I guess means that they, they can't really touch it that way, so GoldenEye Source has been out for the last couple of years and that's pretty good, so they, they, you know, they haven't been able to touch that, but anything else like if you try to copyright Super Mario Brothers Legend of Zelda, anything Nintendo related, they're going to shut you down so they had all these sites shut down because of it and this big website, AMU Paradise, or MU Paradise, it's one of the best sites I went to for my Dreamcast games and my PlayStation 1 games. I would download the iOS on them and i burn them to CDs and stuff. So I, had, I have a ton of PlayStation games. I have a ton of Dreamcast games from that site. When it comes to Nintendo, Super Nintendo, all those older consoles, I have all the games already. I've had them downloaded. As long as they stay on my hard drive and nothing happens, I still got them, which is pretty good. So, with fear that Microsoft was going to hit them next, they issued out an apology letter to everybody stating that, you know, they're going to be taking all their content down. We're sorry. Thank you for the 15-some years that you guys have come and, and, and joined us and downloaded our content and stuff, blah, blah, blah. So, if you go to this website... It's all gone. If you try downloading Super Mario Brothers on there, even though you see a listing for it, it'll say, sorry, this content has been removed. I've tried already. It's all gone. So, gone are the days of being able to emulate on a PC unless you got all that stuff backed up and downloaded like I do. And several other people do. There, there, I'm sure there's still some ways of getting that content, but for right now, it's pretty difficult yeah Nintendo's done fucked us they, they, they fucked us over many times you know this this is a company 
that's been around for god way over a hundred years over a hundred years they have been around they started out making playing cards then they went on to making toys and stuff then they they got into the um the electronics industry you know making a little handheld game and watch uh handhelds back in the late seventies early eighties and then of course when the video game market crashed in eighty three and eighty four you know, Nintendo helped it rise from the ashes with the NES, and then, you know, history was made. So, to me, I'm thinking, okay, Nintendo is wanting us to bow down and bend over and say, well, look, we helped you all out of the video game uh, crash, you know? We helped you get out of that, so you all bow down to us, you know? Anything that comes out of this, you know, if you try to do this with a certain game or if you do that, you know, we own you. That kind of shit. Like, well, how many people out there are actually playing and purchasing your content? <laughs> how many people are purchasing your hardware? I mean, come on. The Switch, it's a good concept as a handheld slash console. But look at some of the issues that people are having with it. The game is heating up whenever you play for long periods of time. It's starting to crack. It's starting to warp. All kind of stuff. So it's like you had a good idea there but it didn't quite pan out. People are still buying a console. Yes. Now for gamers like me sometimes I do enjoy sitting hours on end playing a game getting really into a game. I can sit there for like four or five hours at a time even though the, my console's going to get heated up because you're Excuse me, because you're using it and all. But imagine playing something like the Switch. When you're really getting into a good game of Smash Brothers when that comes out. Or in, you're getting really into The Legend of Zelda. And you're really wanting to beat it. You want to put all these hours and time into this game. And then of course, you know, the console warps. Because it's like, oh, it was not meant for you to sit on it for like four or five hours at a time, you know? It was only meant for maybe a half hour to an hour play. And then turn it off. Do you know what kind of gamers you have out there? They're not going to want... You don't... One does not simply sit there and play a game for an hour. <laughs> one simply does not just play a game for one hour. You got to sit there for a good amount of time to get into a game to actually enjoy it. So yeah, with Nintendo's new console, I'm, I'm not going to get it. I played a little bit of it. it it's all right. I, I can't get with the Joy-Cons. The Joy-Con controllers are, are too small. They're, 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 they're like fucking sauce, little tiny sausages in my fucking hands. Now, if you really want to play a good game on there, and you want to use a really good controller, I say get the, uh, the Joypad, which is like a Xbox-shaped controller with the, with the uh, joysticks and all that on there. That works out perfect, especially if you're playing a game like Doom on there, because Doom runs very decently on the Switch, so yeah. I've played it. I, I liked it, you know. I'm surprised a game like Doom, I'm surprised with the Switch's hardware, it's able to handle a game like that. But now, let's move on from Nintendo, let's move on to Xbox. Because this was announced the last couple days... And I finally got to sit down and read the article. Now, to you guys out there who have not purchased an Xbox One yet, looking to purchase one, let's say you want to upgrade to the Xbox One X. Okay, that console's still $500. It's, it's worth it. It's still worth it. People say, oh, it's not worth it. It's $500. I ain't putting $500 out for a console. It's well worth it. Think it as think of it as like the high end PC of consoles. This is the most powerful gaming console to date. To date. I I got one a while back. And then yes, of course, I still play it. The power with this console, especially the output and 4K resolution, even for video games itself, it's it's absolutely amazing. You know, the power behind it, the graphics, everything. It's all good. It's worth the $500. Now, 
let's say you guys want to buy it and you ain't got the money for it. Are you going to wait till Christmas for mommy and daddy to get it for you? You're going to save up a few paychecks and get it that way? Well, here's an alternative way. And this was announced by Larry Urban. Well, he shared it out. And I guess Phil Spencer of them announced it uh, this past week at Gamescom. Xbox All Access is now a new subscription service with Xbox Live, Game Pass, and a console. Microsoft may be planning to unveil a new subscription service dubbed a Xbox All Access, granting users the opportunity to split the cost of an Xbox console and associated subscriptions over two years. This is big news right here. Let's get into it. As always, plans can and do change, but if what we heard is accurate, Microsoft is looking to unveil its new Xbox All Access service later this month. If you're wondering why it wasn't announced at Gamescom 2018 in Germany, it's because it's looking like it's U.S. only. So, only over here in the U.S. you could take advantage of this subscription service base. <laughs> that's, that's kind of funny, too. Let's see. The service was originally teased by the Verge's Tom Warren on Twitter. So we've since confirmed some more of the details with our own sources. Customers will be able to pay... Okay, there's two types of subscriptions right here. One of them's for the Xbox One S, the other one is for the One X. For the One X, customers will be able to pay out $21.99 a month and net themselves an Xbox One S, Xbox Live, and Game Pass for two years. $34.99 will net them an Xbox One X. Paying up front, a 1S costs around $230 at the Microsoft Store with a free game. Xbox Live currently costs $60 on the Microsoft Store for a year, and Game Pass costing $9.99 a month. You can often get Xbox Live cards cheaper through Amazon or as other associated deals, but at the retail price, Xbox All Access should work out a little cheaper over time than paying for all these services outright. After the two-year contract period has fully been paid, users will own the consoles as expected. Xbox All Access will be powered by Dell's preferred account system, similar to financing options available on for service details. If accurate, Xbox All Access will debut for US customers in the near future, through the Microsoft Store and possibly other retailers. It could be the easiest, cheapest way to access the Xbox One family, spreading the cost out over two years while also guaranteeing developers a boost in long-term Xbox Game Pass subscription, guaranteeing a large player base on the service. Microsoft is pursuing Game Pass aggressively, supporting the service with an all-new app for mobile devices while cutting various deals with big-name third-party titles. Xbox All Access seems like it'd be a next logical step. So, what does this mean for you guys who want to buy an Xbox One S or One X? Well, let's talk about the difference between the two consoles. The One S is a slim down version of the OG Xbox One. It does everything that the OG Xbox One does, except it's a little bit more faster, and it outputs in 4K for the Blu-ray part. It doesn't do 4K for the gaming. It only does it for the video. Other than that, it's just a smaller version, a more, a little bit more quieter version, of the original Xbox, just a, a, a smidge a bit faster. I've even noticed, like, even when it comes to the graphical detail, it's a little bit more sharper than the original. The One X is the more powerful console. The, the specs in it are superb. The specs in the One X outbeat the specs in the PS4 Pro. So whether you want to be Xbox One or PS4, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter, whatever your preference is. I'm just saying the specs, the hardware in the One X are more powerful than the specs in the PS4 Pro. 
and they both cost around the same price. Now, this all access thing, what does it mean? It means you sign up for the subscription through the Microsoft Store. You're going to get the console. You're going to get two years of Xbox Gold. And you're going to get two years of Game Pass. Let's say you go for the 1X. You will pay a flat fee of $35 a month for two years. Now, this subscription service is, is not renting or leasing. You're not renting or leasing the console. When you sign up for the service, you own the console. You own it. Granted that you keep paying for it over, over a period of two months. So, this is an easier and cheap way of getting an Xbox One S or One X. If you don't want to outright pay out of pocket for One X and you want to upgrade, this is a cheaper way. This is going to be a good way for Microsoft to sell their product to people who actually want the console. And I'm pretty sure there'll be like a money back guarantee kind of thing if you don't like it or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And from what I even read further on, um, from what I understand, you got to have good credit. They do run background checks on your credit because when you're when you're paying out for a service like this and you're and you're buying a console, which is the most expensive thing out there, of course they're going to run a background check on your credit because they want to make sure that you're going to be able to keep up with the payments and stuff on the console if you really want it. So they do that. Uh, when it comes to the APR, it, it runs like a credit card in a way, sort of. So there's going to be like 0% APR for two years, which means you're not going to be paying all this outrageous extra interest or taxes for it. You're going to be paying out flat out for a $500 console, two years of gold, and two years of Game Pass. Now, I ran up the price. I, I looked at the price. Okay, now... 1X is $500. Okay, over a year of, over a span of two years, I did $500 divided by 24, 24 months. And it comes out to <clears throat> paying out around $21 a month for the Xbox itself. And that's for the 1X. It's going to be a little, like $5, $10 cheaper for the 1S. So if you're buying the 1X, $21 a month. That's damn cheap for this console for 24 months. And you're paying out $35, right? Well, that's where the Game Pass and the Xbox uh, uh, Gold membership come in. That fills up the rest of it. So you're actually getting a very good deal right there. So if you got good credit and you're making some money, you're making some money, $35 a month, and you want that Xbox, that Xbox One X and all, and you're going to be paying for it, hey, and after the two-year contract is up and it's, everything's paid for, the Xbox is completely yours, still. So, like I said, you're not technically leasing or renting it. You're buying it. And you're, you're making a payments. Now, if you go to somewhere like Aaron's Herena Center, now, I, I say avoid those places completely. I had a buddy who wanted to rent to buy. Oh, sorry about that. God damn. <laughs> Mike's all over the place. He wanted to rent to buy a PlayStation 4. And I told him, you don't want to go to rent a center. If you rent to buy, you're going to be paying outrageous prices every week. And when you look at it, let's say you want a PS4. A regular PS4 right now, brand new, is about $250 to $300. You go to Rena Center or Aaron's or any of those little stores that rent out the things to buy, you're gonna be paying two to three hundred dollars more for the console. And yet this dude, he's like, Oh, I don't care, I just want the console. I don't care what I'm paying out for. I'm like, dude, you're wasting more money on it. You're wasting more money. I tried to warn him, but he's he was fucking hard headed anyway. I haven't talked to him in a while. This is somebody who bought a fucking Nintendo Wii U to play the new Legend of Zelda, beat it, and then trade it all back in. I'm like, how fucking dumb can you get? <laughs> but I'm saying, if any of you guys are looking to rent, to buy, or buy a console, and you don't have the money out front, 
don't don't do something like rent a center or errands or any of those places out there you know like where you're renting furniture from you're gonna pay out two to three hundred dollars more for something that costs two three hundred dollars you know you'll end up paying like five six seven hundred dollars for it but with this right here this is legit and if it start if let, let's say they start up the service next month or closer to the holiday season you know you could actually that'd be good you know what that actually would be good let's say you want to get your kids an xbox one x for christmas and of course nowadays you got to save up you know everything's going up in price and shit and you know, there's not too many good jobs out there paying, you know, and, and you want to get your kids that console and they want it. So that there you go. Go through one of those programs right there, the subscription service, where you're paying thirty five dollars a month for that for that console for that kid. And of course I'm pretty sure you can cut it off at any time, you know. I can say, Oh, you being a little motherfucker, huh? I'm gonna beat your ass, you know, I'm gonna punish you, all right. I'm gonna take your console back, you'll never see it again. <laughs> you know? So yeah, that that'd be good, you know, for the holiday season. Parents can subscribe to that kind of subscription service and actually purchase the console, give it to their kids on Christmas Day. You know, they, you know, they're not gonna understand where you got it from, but hey, they they don't care. They're gonna plug it in and play it that day. And of course, there'll probably be a goddamn DDoS attack on Christmas Day where kids, you know, kids can't play games and shit, and they'll be like, ah, motherfucker, <laughs> you know. So yeah, that that's that with the Xbox. You know, that, that is a really good deal. You know, Microsoft has definitely got some pretty good marketing strategies going on right now, especially with um pretty much putting out there their Game Pass subscription service, one low monthly fee, which I'm subscribed to Game Pass. You get over a hundred games and they add games to it every so often. And especially when it comes to Microsoft exclusives, like an exclusive game like let's take uh Forza Horizon Four. When that comes out October 2nd, I think it's October 2nd. It's it's first week of October. Let me check here. Uh yeah, October 2nd when that game comes out, it's going to be on Game Pass. So, I'm going to be able to get it for free. I'll get the game for free. I won't have to worry about shelling out $60 for the game. I'll be able to download it, play it for free because it's an Xbox exclusive and it's going to be exclusive through the Game Pass for quite a while. So, that's going to be pretty neat right there. Now let's let's move on to um some music related news. Okay. Sadly, a couple months ago, yeah, about two, three months ago, <clears throat> in music news, we lost legendary Pantera drummer, Vinnie Paul Abbott. He died, and they recently did the um they did the uh what you call it on him. And it, it it came out that he had died of a enlarged heart and coronary artery disease. So let's see, Pantera and Hell Yeah drummer Vinnie Paul Abbott died, well, they say passed away, on June 22nd, earlier this year, at the age of 54. Pantera released a statement explaining the cause of his death, saying, Vincent Paul Abbott died from natural causes, specifically... Dilated cardiomyopathy. <laughs> I can't. I can't pronounce the word. I'm sorry. Some of these fucking words they put out there, you know, when it comes to medical related uh, diseases and shit. Severe coronary artery disease was identified as a significant condition to the cause of death, according to the official report submitted by Clark County Coroner's Office. Pantera tweeted, seen below. A secondary post states, We ask that you please continue to respect the privacy of the family and friends of Vinnie Paul. No further statement will be issued. And this tweet went out August 27th from Pantera's uh, Twitter page. Vincent, uh, basically what I just read, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, the outpouring of grief from members of the rock and metal community upon Vinnie Paul's death was staggering as they shared their memories of the drummer and thanked him for his boundless kindness and generosity. And he was a damn good he was a damn good for performer too, you know. He he was one of the best. He was a really friendly guy from what a lot of people had said. You know, he was a real kind hearted guy. Same thing with his brother Daryl Dimebag Abbott. 
who passed away, who was actually murdered in December of 2004. And I remember that year, too. It was um, my birthday. And my birthday was like six or seven days, something like that, after it happened. And I found out. I found out my birthday. That was sad. Because <laughs> I had just started listening to Pantera the year before. You know, and I, I fell in love with their with their music. You know, I I, I didn't grow up on them throughout the 90s. I never knew what, who any of these bands were. I didn't get into them until, like, in high school, you know. But that that was really hurtful. It, it, it was, you know. Dimebag, you know, he was performing with his, his new band, Damage Plan, in a nightclub. And then some sick fuck with a shotgun. Uh, was it a shotgun? It was either a shotgun or a pistol. I forgot what he had. And he just come in there and he starts shooting. He shot a couple of people in the crowd. He shot... He shot Dimebag. I mean, he, I guess he was going right for Dimebag. I don't know. But he... There was a lot of speculation going on with what happened with that. But, you know, Dimebag was murdered. You know. It, it, it's almost like when you listen to Don McLean's American Pie. You know, it's like that's the day the music died. Even though he was singing about Buddy Holly, the big bopper, and Richie Valens. You know, the day the music died. But that's wherever you go. You know, however you look at music... Dimebag was a legend to a lot of people, and he was just murdered for no reason. And I believe he was in his 50s, too. He was either in his 30s or 50s, somewhere around there, when he was murdered. And then here it is, over 20 years later, his brother Vinny dies of natural causes. But, I mean, who knows? All those years of drugs and alcohol, it's like my buddy said, you know, it catches up to him. All those years of all that stuff, that bad shit going on. It, it, it does catch up to you in the long run. Just like just like with smoking. Just like with smoking. You smoke cigarettes for so long, and then you, you quit. But you know what? It's going to catch you in the long run. I mean, you, you it will seem like you're much more healthier, you know, being off the cigarettes and all, but... It, it does catch up with you. You're not gonna live... You're not gonna live a lifetime, you know, if you smoke for 20 years and then quit and stay off the thing for like... I don't know, 40 years, it's going to catch up to you in the long run. That stuff stays with you. So yeah, rest in peace, Vinnie Paul, who has passed away just uh, two months ago. Yeah. Let's move on to something else here. That was a little bit too sad, but I figure I put that out there, you know. I, I do enjoy, I do love Pantera, and I love Hell Yeah. Hell Yeah is a really good heavy metal band. And to have Vinnie Paul be part of that band. That was that was phenomenal. I don't you cannot replace Vinnie Paul. You know, and th this day and age that he was a really good drama. You cannot replace Vinnie Paul at all. On to something else. Let's let's move back to something uh game related here. To anybody who has played Halo. And there's quite a bit of people out there who play Halo. Halo is one of those good games, you know. I enjoy Halo. I played them all, beat them all. Now, as of, um, let's see, the 27th, this is on HaloWaypoint.com, the update. Now, for the past year or so, 343 Studios have been working on making the Master Chief Collection much better than what it was when it first launched about, what, four or five years ago? Because when it first launched with the OG Xbox One, there were so many flaws with this collection, you know, with the uh, the the servers on it, long load times, took took a long time to get into a game, etc., all that kind of stuff. They've been working on it, making it the best that they could possibly could. They just finished up with it. Uh, the last major update rolled out yesterday. I actually got it downloaded on my console now. And if you are on Xbox Game Pass, expect it September first. That's right. That's, uh, what, Friday? No, Saturday. Okay, this Saturday, if you are subscribed to Game Pass, expect it to roll out on Game Pass this Saturday. Master Chief Collection is coming out. We're talking five games. That's right, five games. Well, the fifth one you probably got to purchase if it's not added for free. You do get Halos 1 through 4, and then you get um, Halo 3 ODST, which is, you know, of course... The side thing from for Halo 3, side story. 
I think I had to buy mine. I can't remember. But if it's free, you could download that too. So you figure five big games in one and a lot of multiplayer to it. Now, be prepared. This is like close to 200 gigs of space that you're going to need on your console for this title. Almost 200 gigabytes of space. That's a lot of space. That's a lot of updates. That's all the games. That's everything. All right, so let's see. MCC update enhanced and headed back to Game Pass. Or I'll head it to Game Pass. Uh, the update, which will automatically begin downloading the next time you log into Master Chief Collection, is a culmination of months of work by the team here at 343 in close partnership with the MCC Insider Community. Today, via extensive player feedback and public fighting, or was that public fight? No, public flighting. Uh, yeah, I guess it's flight or flight or fight. I don't know. We've begun working on. We began working to bring these new features and improvements to MCC in time for the game's official debut on the Xbox Game Pass September first. And to our MCC insiders who have played, tested, and provided feedback over the past weeks and months, thank you. Your passion and participation have been a critical part of the process, and this simply wouldn't be possible without your support. Whether you're an existing MCC veteran or a newcomer excited to experience a Master Chief saga for the first time via Xbox Game Pass, the definitive classic Halo experience is now better than ever. If you have been following along with us on the journey and are already familiar with this update, Skip to the bottom to the official patch notes. So, let's see. We got visual enhancements for the Xbox One X. If you own a One X and a compatible TV, you're in for a real treat. Master Chief Collection has received visual enhancements to deliver the entire Master Chief saga up to 4K UHD and HDR. And, of course, each of the titles already run at 60 frames per second, delivering what truly is a definitive way to experience the classic Halo collection. We got improved matchmaking. <laughs> okay. So, okay, this game did come out in 2014, so about four years ago, yeah. So when it first came out, the uh, matchmaking was kind of bleh. <laughs> Public flighting. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Betty Core Rex? What's going on, Ray? My ben, my main man. What's, what's happening, man? Welcome to the show. As always, you know, good to have you in here. What's going on, man? I just now switched over. Nothing much, man. Reading some news out here. My PS4, brother. <laughs> you know, I'm still on Xbox. I actually um, don't have a PS4 anymore. I plan on getting another one here real soon, man. You know, play some God of War and, and all that other stuff. The uh, Detroit Become Human. I definitely got to get into that and all. But before I get back to you, man, I'm going to go ahead and finish reading this article because we got some improved stuff for Halo, the Master Chief Collection. As I did say, improved matchmaking. So it's going to be much more easier to get into uh, get into a uh, online game with this game, with, you know, with the servers and all. Um, you got offline land support. Oh, we got land support now. Ah, uh, the early days of Halo were defined by late nights of intense multiplayer games in basements, storms, and living rooms. MCC now works better than ever online, but the ability to play classic Halo games with friends on a social network with minimal latency is something players have been asking for since the initial launch. So we got some offline LAN support. Intelligent delivery uh, is a new feature that allows the individual fa facets of the overall MCC package to be selectively installed by players. MCC is a large game, jam-packed with content. So this is a really great quality of life improvement to give players more control over the experience in their console storage. So I'm guessing you get to choose out of this whole bundle what to install. So basically, like, let's uh, okay, let's say if you don't care to play the Halo 2 campaign or the Halo 4 multiplayer, you don't have to install those components. Another nice bonus of intelligent delivery is that it will also show... Well, show, not show, but allow players to install languages other than what their console is natively set to. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, the MCC will attempt to install the entire 70 gigabyte package. However, once the game display is ready to play, you can launch the game and access the intelligent delivery settings to customize your installation specifics. So, the base game is originally 70 gigabytes big. Now, with all this extra patches 
DLC, anything at all. This is a bit. This is a big file. This is very big. And my buddy said it was like close to 200 gigabytes of space. Close to 200. <laughs> you gave up a PS4. I didn't really give up on it, man. I kind of um, traded it in a little toward my um, Xbox One X, but I do plan on getting another PlayStation, man. I, I do miss. I do miss playing, you know, the PlayStation base. I still got you as friends on there. Because I want, I want to be able to play games like God of War, Detroit Become Human, and all the other exclusives that they got on there. Plus, uh, sadly let you know, I haven't touched in on The Witcher or, or Dragon Age Inquisition in a while. I gotta get back onto those. I've been playing uh, PUBG a lot. I don't know if you uh, ever tune in to play uh, or even know what PUBG is or seen anybody play PUBG. It's a very fun game. It's it's a more I like PUBG more than I like Fortnite. Fortnite is more for kids. PUBG, you would love PUBG, uh, Rex. PUBG is like a um, thing of it's kind of like a modernized version of SOCOM, basically. It's it's very militarized style. You know, when it comes to the weapons, armor, and stuff, you pick up. You 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 basically let's say you go in there naked. You know, you go in there with your, just your underwear. And you gotta search around for like helmets and armor and stuff like that, like you know, police vests and stuff, backpacks, collect ammo, find the guns, and just survive to be number one. Basically, like you know, Fortnite, but much better, much much better. I love that game. Uh, let's see, let's finish up on this. Uh, game options. There are more improved game options in the game settings. Okay, language settings, text. Faster load times. That's what I've been looking forward to. Yeah, we got some faster load times for for Halo Master Chief Collection. The matchmaking playlists are much better. Oh wow, I can't wait to get back into playing that today. All right, so we we do got a lot of stuff on here. I will actually actually this is shared on my Twitter feed. So if anybody wants to follow us on Twitter at Aerofficial17. That is definitely on our Twitter feed. You can scroll down and look at it and read the article from there on out. So yeah, um, I'll definitely be getting on Halo here <laughs> real soon. Actually, I might stream that tomorrow. I might stream some Halo Master Chief Collection tomorrow and just see what all is going on with that, you know? And of course, we do. I do have some other uh, announcements here. Uh, PUBG on Xbox. It has been in game preview um, well, the game preview program status for almost a year. It came out late last year, around, I think, October, November. It's been a very fun experience playing this game on Xbox. I also have it on PC. So, coming September 4th, PUBG will be in its full game form. So, it will no longer be in preview status. It'll be the full game. So if you've already purchased the game for 30 bucks under game preview, you don't have to worry about paying anything else out. You own the game right out. It's just there will be a big update coming out on September 4th where the game will be in its full form out of game preview. Plus, we will have a new map, the Sunhawk map. Sunhawk, I've been playing it on a PC version. It's a small, small ver it's a small map. There's going to be a lot of people dying real quick in that one on Xbox. People are not ready for that, <laughs> let me tell you. But yeah, PUBG is going to be full form. It's coming September 4th. Also coming September. I think it's September 4th. The, the, the first week of September, we got um, The Forsaken coming for Destiny 2. So anybody who's a fan of Destiny 2... I will definitely be on that. I will definitely try to stream it that Wednesday or Thursday with Bane. That's going to be a lot of fun. Then, of course, coming September 11th, I believe it is, we should have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I can't wait to play that game. I still got to beat Rise of the Tomb Raider. I'm, I kind of kicked myself for that. I played the first Tomb Raider, the reboot, which was really good. Beat it twice. And I'm working on a third time right now on Xbox. And I've yet to do Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is still a really good title. I've had fun with it you know, when I played it last, and i got to beat that. And, of course, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is coming out. I, I can't wait for that. And then, of course, the, um, the beta for Battlefield Five is supposed to come out next month, too. 
as my buddy Rex here in the, in the, in the chat says, so too many games. There's too many games and so, so not enough time to play them, you know? There's just so many games out there. I swear, it's like, as we get older and we have access to all these new games and we can play them, but here's the thing. We don't have the time to play them. We're all working. We're doing things with our families and stuff. We're doing things around the house, yard work, all kind of stuff. It's like, when do we have time to play all these awesome games, you know? It, it, it's pretty sad. It's like... All these games are just—they're they're just so good. You know what? I blame the the these third party companies for all these good games. I blame them for my time spent <laughs> playing a game because they're just so good. And it's like, you know, you remember seeing a trailer for a movie, you know, in the '90s and all. You would see all these good movie trailers, and you're like, God, I gotta see that movie. And you know what? Those movies are like two hours long or an hour and a half long. These video games that we play, they're like fucking eight hours long, 20 hours long, 40 hours long. And then once you get into it, it's like real good. And, and you and you've done played it for like 40 hours throughout the week. And then another game comes out and there's like two more games that come out you want to try out. And then you're like, oh God, I'm so back. I'm still backlogged in a lot of games. God. Like I just got Outlast 2 last year I think yeah sometime last year I was playing that and I still haven't beaten out last two yet that game was pretty terrifying as well <laughs> Streets of Rage 4 yes I saw that too Streets of Rage 4 is coming out too I completely forgot about that when I, I, I actually saw that two days okay let me see yeah Streets of Rage 4 let me get a article on here thanks for bringing that up man well, it looks like there is a website for it if it actually load up. Yeah, Streets of Rage 4. Um, it's a website, and I guess it's a trailer for it. So that's coming out. Let me see. Is there an actual release date for it? Okay, Streets of Rage 4 announced on IGN.com. It's in the works. Da -da -da -da. Streets of Rage 4, a direct continuation of Sega's arcade brawler series, will sport hand down visuals, hand draw visuals. I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, I'm still sick. From Lizard Cube, alongside new gameplay mechanics, solo and co op play, new stages, and original story. A release date and platforms were not announced yet. Sega released the first Streets of Rage game back in 1991 and followed up with two sequels in 92 and 94. .EMU recently announced Wind Jammers 2 for the Nintendo Switch and PC coming in 2019. Wind Jammers 2 serves as a sequel to the 1994 sports arcade game that was remastered last year. So, Streets of Rage 4, yeah, I can't wait for that. There hasn't been a release date on that yet. But when it does come, that, yeah, that, it better have multiple characters. I, I know, man, you know, just to have only like two or three is like a, a bore, you know, have like, God, just, just make it, add new characters if you have to, new, new characters to the story, but give us like anywhere between five and 10 characters, you know, because Streets of Rage, God, that was a, that was a short game. Well, you got to figure it was a short game for the time. And now it's like, you know, on these newer consoles, make it like a, a five to ten hour experience or something. Well, I don't, I don't see them going like five hours, but well, at least ten hours. But give us a, a good amount of gameplay to it, you know. Just make it really good. That's that's what we need. We need a game. See, I don't play too too many two D side scroller games anymore, unless it's an older console. I don't know. Maybe it's just something that doesn't you know fit my appeal. But I try to get into a lot of games like. Okay, one game I did play, which was a a um, top-down view game. It's really good. I still yet to beat it. Ray's gonna come over here and, and knock my knock my head in and say, "What the hell's wrong with you, man?" Is the Banner Saga two? <laughs> and I think they just had the Banner Saga three announced or it came out or something. But I still got the Banner Saga two, and I, I, I downloaded that a couple years ago. It was it's pretty good. It's pretty good from what I played. I still yet to beat it. It's just I had so many other games sidetrack me, you know. <laughs> and then of course I've been trying to play um, Assassin's Creed Origins. I gotten pretty far in that game. I still got to get back into it. 
I got Darksiders 1 and 2 to play, and Darksiders 3 is getting ready to come out. It's There's just so much going on. And then my buddy, he's got pre-ordered Battlefield 5. We're going to be playing that come October. He's thinking about getting um, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, but he's not too sure yet. He wants to see how the game actually does. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, if you get it, I'll play it because him and I, we both game share games. So anything he gets digital, I'll get digital as well. Legacy characters plus new ones would be cool. Yeah, that would be nice, man. That that would definitely be nice. I mean, I, I can't wait to see how that actually fit you know fits in, you know, with um with the originals. Let me see. There should be a couple more things here. Um I already talked about the new subscription service from Xbox, which is pretty cool. Uh, Earthfall, I think I did announce it at the beginning of the show. Shadow did say um, Earthfall has new content out today. Actually, um, that's a pretty interesting game you would love to get into there, uh, Rax, is uh, Earthfall. It's not on PS4. Uh, well, I, actually, you know what? I think it is on PS4. Uh, um, let me... Let me um uh, let me get on that. I, I think it might be on PS4 from what I hear. Strategy RPG too, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess with the bad with the uh, banner saga, I guess it definitely needs replay value. Okay, looking up Earthfall. Some reason I I I, I thought maybe it was only for Xbox. I, I'm I might be wrong. Um, yeah, Earthfall is also on PS4. It's also on PS4. So there's a game for you to try out there, uh, Rex Earthfall. It's like playing Left 4 Dead. It's 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 not it's not done by the same uh, companies. This is um. Let me see. Is there any way to? Uh, I can't tell who it was done by. Okay, it was done by Gearbox and someone else. Okay, Gearbox is another one. But this is a four-player co-op support drop-in drop-out game. Deploy barricades. Da da. You can print weapons. You can 3D print weapons in the game to use. 10 action pack missions and plus the DLC for the game is going to be free. It's coming out in free patches. The only thing that you will purchase on the game if you want to purchase it is the cosmetic items such as weapon skins, um, uh, monster skins, stuff like that. Little cosmetic items. So they're they're only going to be the very own they're the only microtransactions on the game is the cosmetic items. And you don't really have to get them. I mean, if you want if you want a new look for your weapon, that's cool. They'll probably pay you like they'll probably charge you like 99 cents for a weapon skin. But all the DLC coming out for the game is going to be free and it's going to be like uh the DLC packages come out once a month. So there's like one that just came out today, one will come out next month and then the following month. And they're going to add a new campaign to the story. They're going to add some new monsters, maybe some new weapons, whatever. Right now, if you get the standard edition, um, well, the deluxe edition comes with everything as well. But the deluxe the, the uh, deluxe edition comes with skins and a few other things. But the game itself, it comes with two campaigns, which I want to say is about two to three hours long, depending on how you play and who you play with. If you check out um, our YouTube channel, Rex, I, you know, you just look me up on uh, YouTube Arrow Entertainment. You can see that right there below. Or you just click on the, one of the links below the, uh, the stream and just click on it. Yeah, I do have a, another YouTube channel up right now. It's doing pretty good. It's where all my pre-recorded streams and everything get uploaded to. We do got a couple uh, streams on there for Earthfall, Campaign 1 and Campaign 2. And they're, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. It's like playing Left 4 Dead, but with aliens. <laughs> and it's got a really good difficulty to it, too. So I know how you love difficult difficult games so yeah this will definitely be something good for you especially if you get three other guys in there with you to play through it it, it is a definitely a difficult game but it's really good it's done really well and i'm surprised not a whole lot of people have tried it out yet so yeah the um the dlc had just come out for that and there's a couple of things i do want to say um the other day yes neil simon King of Comedy Playwrights has died at 91. I guess I can cover that for a little bit. Kill some time. Neil Simon, one of the rare late 20th century playwrights 
who was a brand name for plays such as The Odd Couple and Barefoot in the Park, has died Sunday. This was past, this past Sunday. He was 91. A statement from his rep said, Neil Simon, the Pulitzer Prize winner American playwright, has died last night at New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. The cause was complications from pneumonia. Oh, wow. Pneumonia is still a killer these days. His wife, Elaine Joyce Simon, was along was at his bedside along with Mr. Simon's daughters, Ellen Simon and Nancy Simon. In addition to his four Oscar nominations and 17 Tony nominations, Simon's works brought an unsurpassed 50 Tony nominations for the actors. His competitive Tony wins came for The Odd Couple and for the best play for Lost in Yonkers and Biloxi Blues. Yeah, that's that's who I know him uh, as most famous for is the Odd Couple. The Odd Couple is one of those um, popular TV shows and movies too. Yeah, it was um, it was pretty good. Welcome to the chat room. Why did that pop up all of a sudden? Hmm. That beats the hell out of me. And finally, some more music related news. Um, Rex, yeah, this is. Uh, I'm pretty sure you listen to them. I know you listen to a lot of um, hard rock, heavy metal, and stuff like that. After 41 years, Rush say it's over. Alex Lifen reveals the truth. For over 40 years now, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees Rush have been at the forefront of all things rock and roll related. Many even claim that Rush are the founders of prog rock. It's certainly not an argument without merit either. Rush's songs are complex, intelligent, fascinating, and above all else, iconic for all those reasons. Rush are one of the best, pure and simple. However, it's been a while since we've heard the band, but the reason why was just been revealed. In a, re- in a recent uh, interview with the Globe and Mail, guitarist Alex Lifen uh, recently gave some insight as to why the band has been so quiet as of late. He had this to say, It's been a little over two years since Rush last toured. We have no plans to tour or record anymore. We're basically done. After 41 years, we felt it was enough. If you're like me, then you'd definitely be saddened to hear this news. It seems as if Rush could could continue on further forever and ever. However, we should respect the decision to retire. After all... They have spent decades doing nothing but giving us timeless music and performances. And for that, we say thank you, Rush. And there's a lot of good bands out there that are starting to, you know, hit the hit the old bandwagon and, and say it's time to retire, you know. Actually, um, what's even, fu- what's even <laughs> pretty cool, too, and, and Rex, um, I forgot to tell you all about I forgot to text you this, man, but last Sunday... My buddy Bane and I, we went to Jiffy Lube Live to see Red Sun Rising, Shine Down, and Godsmack. And let me tell you, last year, we went to see Metallica, Avenged Sevenfold, and Volbeat. That was a good show. That was a really good show, especially with Metallica. I know you're a Megadeth guy, and I do respect that, man. Hey, a lot of people love Megadeth over Metallica. Because people do say Metallica is kind of like a soul, you know, they kind of sell themselves out, you know, uh, what the hell you call that word? I forgot what it was. Is uh, they're like sellout sort of, and Megadeth is like kind of like a more underground sound when it comes to heavy metal. You know, you don't hear a whole lot of them, but they are just that one band that's really good. You know, with Dave Mustaine, but you know, Metallica did put on a good show last year. M and T. And after we left Jiffy Lube Live last Sunday night, my ba- my buddy and I, we looked at each other and said, you know what, this beat last year's con- <laughs> concert for us. This, <laughs> this show was that good. Red Sun Rising, they were, they were pretty decent. You know, they have a few songs that I like, and I was glad that they actually played them. And I was like, yeah, it was a pretty good show. And then Shine Down came out, and, I, and I'm telling you, Shine Down stole the show. Shine Down put on an excellent performance that night, and it was really good. I I enjoyed them a, a hell of a lot. You know their energy, the stage show, the pyros, the laser show, everything was really good. And Godsmack was really good too. Godsmack came out, 
they put on a really good energetic show. You know, Sully, the, the front man, he was hilarious as always. When I went into this show, I was expecting what I'd already known how Godsmack is when it comes to their performances. Because I've seen Godsmack live on DVDs and, and such like and stuff like that. So I already knew what to expect. And and that's what I got. I got a really good show from Godsmack. It's almost pretty much the same as they usually do, you know. But it was still a really good show. I was glad to be there to see Godsmack. But I will say Shine Down, seeing them for the first time, I think Shine Down stole the show at Jiffy Lube. It, it it was it was astounding, you know. I, I, I was happy with it. It was definitely worth it. We were like in the center of the stadium. We were like almost dead center, like in the center of the whole area, you know. We were like in the middle, in between everybody, but we had a good eyes down view of them, you know. And of course a couple times Brent and Zachary of Shine Down, they came up close to us and they were standing there singing Simple Man. And that was a really heartfelt performance right there. So we were we were happy to be there. It was it was a good show. Back in May, my wife and I we went and saw Theory of a Dead Man at the Fillmore. That was that was a pretty good show for what it was, a small venue. That was definitely a pretty good show too. So we ran over a little over an hour, which is still pretty good. I actually don't have too much more to talk about today. Guys, sorry about that, but I haven't been live with TuneIn Live for a good two or three weeks, so I figure, you know what, I'm, it's time to bring it back, you know, with the podcast. We might do another one tomorrow. My co-host, Dark, may be here, you know, we'll talk about some Star Wars or something, you know. Hopefully you guys will join us for that. Anyway, thank you for anybody who comes in and joins us. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Arrow Entertainment, be sure to follow us over on twitch.tv slash arrow with a name. Also, keep up to date on when we're going to be streaming and what we're going to be streaming next on Twitter at tw- Arrow. Ugh, ugh, I can't even talk straight. At Arrowofficial17. Also, if you're on Facebook and if you want to follow and like us on Facebook.com slash Arrow with a name. Also, to my buddy Rex over here. Thank you for coming in, man. Haven't talked to you in a while. Good to see you as always, man. Hope to see you in the future streams and such. And everybody else, have a good day. This was Tune In Live, you know, brought to you by, of course, your favorite host here, Mike C. I don't have any sponsors. I'm sorry. (laughs) Anyway, guys, we're going off the air. Have a good day, all. Catch you next time.